Jodell Falland. Traveling, while I'm traveling, I'm a big fan of the um, the Cabin in the Woods film. Any any particular stories you'd like to tell from Cabin in the Woods? <laughs> um, I mean, it was it was so cool. I still can't believe that I was actually in that. Uh, it was so fun to be a part of, but it was really strange because while I was filming it, I couldn't really see anything. So when people ask me about stories from filming, I'm like, I was blind for pretty much all of that because I was wearing contacts that just like blocked all of my vision. So I'm like awkwardly running, but like zombie running through the forest at night, but I can't see anything. And I was just trying so hard not to trip. <laughs> um, and then I couldn't really eat either because of all the prosthetics and it looks awesome. Totally worth it, but it's a little bit weird actually being a zombie on set, but uh, but I loved it. I am a big Buffy fan, so to be able to work with Joss Whedon, amazing. I am here with the incredible Melanie Scrifano. Thank you for joining us at Supernova TV. Thank you for having me. Now, you're obviously best known for your most recent work, where you are playing the lead in Tell Me What the TV Show is Called. Why Nona Earp. Winona Earp. See, when I see it written down, I think Winona. Yeah. Correct? Now, Not why correct. is it pronounced that way? It's it's a play on... You know, it's funny. We, st <laughs> we uh, started shooting. The day we started shooting, they were like, you know what? Stop saying Winona. Just say Winona. Okay. We don't know why. Don't know They why. just were like, it sounds better. But it's based on a comic book, correct? It's based on a comic book based on um, a real life uh, sort of American superhero, but not superhero, called uh, Wyatt Earp. Okay, yeah. so that, that makes the pronunciation make sense then? Uh, sure, we'll go Absolutely. with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, did you read the comics before you started working on the show? No. No. Did I sound Australian? It did. Thank I, you. I wondered if you were doing a thing then. or I was I... doing a thing. Okay, awesome, <laughs> awesome. Uh, no. I didn't. I didn't because um, I, as an actor, sometimes you, you then just start co copying things instead mm -hmm. of creating your own. Yeah. But then after, um, after I started shooting, I started reading it. So how much of the show is based directly on the storylines in the comics? They're, they're, they're standalone. Okay. Um, just because in a comic, you have unlimited budget. Mm -hmm. And on a show, you can afford a bird. Uh, but the bird is like union and you can only afford it for 20 minutes okay. and then it goes. Um, right. So uh, so they're, they're standalone, but some, sometimes, especially in the one that, that Doc Holliday, Tim Roseon has written, um, they do provide keys to the show. Oh, okay. Now, is the comic ongoing now? Is yes. it still being written? It's, it's been rebooted. So the okay. 90s version is no longer because yeah. that Winona had boobs and blonde hair. And this Winona, she's just more of a real girl yeah. um, in this reboot, um, but it's still the same spirit. So are there callbacks now in the comics to what you've created your character to be in the show? I've actually written a couple of the comics. Amazing. So I would say yes, because yes, it's directly absolutely. from my own brain, foul <gasps> brain. Um, so, and, and yeah, there, there are definite, um, we, we've, they've inspired each other. Mm -hmm. So there are definitely fans of the original comic. Uh, were you trying to keep them happy when creating this new sort of evolved version of the character? I feel like because it was such a different, the show we were creating was almost, uh, it was such a modernized version. Mm. Um, we just hoped to find an audience anywhere. <laughs> um, but. To, to see a lot of the fans of the original comic come visit us and, and approve means a lot. Well, they obviously do approve, and you've gained a huge following because not only have you just finished your second season, you've just been renewed for a third. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. When does that premiere? Uh, we usually air in the summer. Okay. Summer. In, summer in American States, summer. Yes. yes. Oh, or right. Australian winter. Oh, my it's so, gosh. It's so confusing. So winter so here. Confusing. Yeah. Uh, and but yet, I don't know when it airs here, so I can't even... I'm pretty I'm sure so that it is 2018 in the winter of Australian... Oh. There you go. Of Australian content. I don't know why I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> that weird? Well, no, that's perfectly <laughs> fine. Um, tell me why you decided to take this character in this direction. How much input did you have? How much input did the director and the creator of this particular show have? Um, I, 
I just auditioned with the way I would play it. Mm -hmm. So from day one, I just sort of said, this is Winona in my brain. And they approved. So it was, it was collaborative in that sense, but it was very much people staying out of each other's way. Mm -hmm. um, and Bo, the original creator, who could have been very precious with his story, was like, go, run, fly. You, it's yours now, um, which is un unbelievably generous. Um, Emily did the same thing, and I think we all just trust each other, so yeah. it's very much a melding of minds. Uh, I've, I've completely lost my train of thought because I'm currently surrounded by my happiest thing in the world, which is a lot of plastic. Uh, you are the Transformers Collectors Club of Australia, is that correct? Uh, yeah, that is me personally, I am the club. You, you are the entire uh, club. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, How much of all this is yours? Uh, the vast majority of it is pretty much mine. I basically brought everything I own. Uh, it's just to come here and showcase everything that the hobby entails. You know, you've got your fan-made stuff, you've got your official, all this fancy stuff that people really get happy to be involved in. What's and your favourite uh, third party, like the fan-made one? What do you uh, what my favourite company or favourite figure? Oh, favourite figure. What, what's the one here that is a, a oh. third party or something that you love? Uh, maybe probably Make Toys Funder Erebus, this guy here. Right. He's a third party version Just of Nemesis one. Prime, okay. but done up in the Power, Optimus, Power Master Optimus Prime style. Cool. And then the guys who did it, they decided to do a bit of artistic interpretation, so throw in a bit more possibility, make him a lot more sort of sleek design, you know, um, really some outrageous proportions, to make it a much more fun figure to mess with. Awesome. And roughly how much every year would you spend on Transformers? A um, couple grants at most of what I earn. <laughs> Suddenly my, my fiddling little collection doesn't seem anywhere near as cool as this. Look, um, I have issues, I know. Yeah, no, no, they, these are not issues. These are things that are very healthy. <laughs> this is a very healthy amount of plastic. Uh, so I guess my other question is, which one are you least likely to miss if I just happen to take it with me? Uh, maybe that Optimus Prime up the front, because that doesn't belong to me. OK. <laughs> Good. Excellent. I like that you're throwing somebody else under the bus on that one. Um, thank you so much. Uh, uh, what, when did you get into to, uh, Transformers? When was it? Uh, you... Probably around a couple years ago. You know, I'm part of this generation where it's toys aren't really a thing that kids get involved in anymore. So growing up, Transformers and all that, never really my thing. Beginning in the late teens and adulthood, I'm just looking at this stuff and being like, this is amazing. This looks like so much fun. You know, it's this amazing market of really creative people just doing what they want and making these incredible figures and really just sucking me right in. That's awesome. I, I, I love that people and, are coming to the collection later. I mean, I was, I've been a yeah. fan since I was very small. Um, like 1984, question mark. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, so you're, you're in it as an adult collector, not as somebody yeah. doing the nostalgia thing. And it's a lot of people in the same situation as well. Like we do have a, a lot of a club is made up of people who were born in the 80s and grew up with the original cartoon and the comics and what have you. But there's also a lot of people around my age who've just come in in the late teens and adulthood and are looking at this stuff and not seeing it as a matter of nostalgia, but as this sort of burgeoning new hobby that's really just now finding its legs and it's an exciting place to be in. Very cool. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. I am so going to waste some money here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.